including Mark Shapiro of TKO. Did a uh, well, he talked about a lot of things for the last couple of days, including the idea of WWE cutting down on the number of house shows, particularly in these shit towns. He didn't use that exact term, but he said like C and D cities, C and D counties. Wow. Yeah. Well, what do you make of all of this? Oh, I mean, he said a lot of different things. Um, I mean, um, I guess like uh, that was, um, you know, one of the things. That they actually, I think uh, Brandon Thurston actually went through, and there were actually only 26 shows in what would be um, for the entire year in what would be considered C&D cities. So it, um, they could cut that back on that, and nobody would even really pretty much notice the difference. But, um, you know, he just said some things as far as uh, talked about the Bellator and PFL deal and talked about how, you know, that Bellator, I mean, um, that the PFL has been a good lead in for UFC. And I cannot recall PFL ever being a lead in for UFC. Um, but, uh, you know, he just said that, you know, they don't they like it that it's on ESPN, that that they don't have any problem with it being on ESPN, that the competition rises, you know, the, you know, rises everything and, and all that. He didn't talk at all about AEW, but did talk about them. Um, he mentioned that the uh, WWE um, analytics department got dumped because Endeavor has their own analytics department. So that's why they cut that out. Um, he talked about, um, you know, obviously one of their goals is to get more money from um, internet, you know, from get, getting more cities to pay for shows. And they did say that the uh, WWE shows in Saudi Arabia were the two shows per year are just over $100 million, which we already knew. But it's the first time that anyone from uh, officially has actually given that number. And he said that the um, Australia has... Um, Paid them sixteen million for three UFC shows, so um, the the one coming up in Perth being the first one, and that Vince McMahon negotiated the Saudi Arabia deal for UFC. the The UFC show in Saudi Arabia is going to be a twenty million dollar site fee, so it's not as much as the WWE was getting, but it's also just a fight night show. It's not a pay per view show, and <laughs> their deal when they go to Abu Dhabi, every time they go to Abu Dhabi, they get twenty five million dollars a show. And, um, you know, that's the thing that they want. And also when they comes to the thing that they're trying to do, which is, you know, the deal where they would have a WWE pay-per-view and an, and a UFC pay-per-view on the same weekend in whether it be a domestic country or a foreign country. Um, the idea is, is that um, by getting both, the idea is that they feel that they can get he basically said, we're doing the math as one plus one equals four. And what he meant by that is that instead of getting um, the money that they would get for one show, they're bringing two shows, but they want the money for four shows with the idea that the combination of bringing both UFC and WWE in the same weekend, the same market will bring in so many tourists that they feel that they can get. Uh, more money from these different communities. So that's one of their goals is to start getting really, you know, trying to use uh, both companies to run pay-per-views in the same market on the same weekend and uh, get big, big money, whether it's, you know, overseas or domestically. So that's one of their big goals going forward. Um, talked about uh, sports rights fees. Uh, mentioned the new NASCAR deal, which is a 40% increase. So they said that the idea that these rights fees are, are not continuing to go up um, is, you know, they have not seen it. And um, they're, you know, they the mentioned the NASCAR, the Premier League in England just went up, although not a great deal, but it did go up a little bit. And SmackDown was up 40%. Um, as far as the raw deal goes, he said they could be announced any time. He said the they, they it could be announced um, now or it could be announced um, the day before, the, you know, in September. He says there's no hurry. They have the infrastructure to make the change, even if it's like in a one-week thing. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Um, 
you know, just talked about when the, the various deals are up. Um, and uh, got two years left on the UFC deal with ESPN. And um, then the, uh, the WWE deal with Peacock is up in March 2026. Obviously, we know the, the Raw deal is up at the end of September. Um, and they don't have a home for it yet. And the uh, NXT and SmackDown deals will switch over in October, you know, um, to the new to their new uh, stations. And um, their goal is to get one billion dollars a year in sponsorship for UFC, and then try to get WWE in that realm as well. And um, you know, they're going to be doing a lot more, um, um, you know, uh, what's it called? Um, advertising in the ring, advertising on the posts, things like that that Vince would never allow. And now, you know, they're going to be doing it. And um, that is uh, kind of like the main stuff um, that he talked about. Um, he said that uh, it, you know, um, but yeah, that was the that was pretty much the main the main stuff the main the main stuff yeah. I like the uh, comment about Vince was that it was a manifesto by Vince, and it has now been thrown out. It was his religion. He I think he made the, the that it was like religion to Vince that you don't advertise on the mats and you don't you you keep it clean, and uh, it's no longer going to be the case. Well, and we've it's already not seen that Vince's company anymore. Oh, no, it's not Vince's company. No. But he's got input, but it's absolutely not his company. And he's not making the final decisions on anything, actually. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never You'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.